today I'm starting out with a little trepidation. Um, this this is uh, this is not a beginner's fly, um, which means I'm going to tie it really poorly. Um, it's got a whole host of materials and some advanced techniques that um, I've watched with um, some other tires that I just find absolutely fascinating. Um, at the end of the day, um, I've got a. It's going to be a. Um, a spent spinner mayfly uh, pattern uh, and we'll go through the materials as we as we tie um, i'm using a 14 knot shear kind of a yellow creamish color here for our thread um, and i've got a three extra long uh, dry fly hook here in my vise so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to tie in um, at some tails and I'm gonna, I actually want, um, this isn't gonna be like a pheasant tail where I just, you know, grab a whole bunch. Um, I want three, um, exactly three. So once I have those tips aligned, this is a teal flank feather. Um, it's got a really nice bar on it. Um, so I've got those tips aligned. I'm gonna pinch right here at the tips, um, which will allow me to just pull those right off. They come off really easily. On this particular pattern, we're gonna, the tails are actually gonna be fairly long. Um, I do want them curved upwards as well. So this feather has a natural curve to it that you can see here. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and place these um, so that we end up with some fairly long tails. Um, we're gonna keep that on the top of our, our hook. And take a look and see where we are here in the back um, and I'm okay with where we are there in the back I am going to hold on to these feathers here um, in the back because I, I want to make sure I keep them on the top of the shank of the hook um, as we go back and I'm just going to tie this back to about where the barb of the hook would be um, I did mash, just mash down the barb here in this particular case, and then I'm going to take a couple of thread wraps forward. Um, so I've got those tails. I'm going to actually use my fingers to kind of push them up. Um, I'm going to also grab my bodkin here uh, so I can separate these, these feathers out into three very distinct uh, feathers here, or fibers. Um, and I'm going to want them kind of in this kind of a trajectory. Um, so they look a little bit like that, um, almost like a little pitchfork kind of a thing. Um, kind of splayed out from one another, um, poking up a little bit. There is a little bit of bend to them, but that's okay. Uh, from, from here, I'm actually gonna grab my UV resin and I'm gonna put just a tiny little dab of UV um, back here, just to help keep those in that kind of a position. Um, otherwise, it just kind of glom together. And I do not want a, a lot here. I just want a tiny little drop. So I'm gonna be very careful. And I do want it on those fibers, so. I wanna make sure that that kind of soaks into those fibers a little bit there. Um, and the nice thing with UV resin is it hardens immediately after you put the light on it. Um, I don't need, I don't want to put the light on it yet, so I can actually work around um, while it's still wet here um, to get these fibers about where I want them to be. And I'm going to be pretty good with that um, right there, so I'm going to go ahead and hit it with my UV light. And hopefully as I spin that around, you can see the uh, those three feathers. They, they the teal feathers make a really nice um, tail there, especially with the barbing, uh, the, the black and white alternating. From here, I'm gonna work a little bit on, um, we're gonna work a little bit on tapering, um, and I will uh, turn my thread counterclockwise quite a bit. And sometimes I'll take my dubbing needle like this and run it over it, and it'll help flatten that thread out a little bit. In fact, you can see it even split there, which is just fine. Um, I'm keeping the, the uh, teal in place at uh, that butt end there that you can see uh, because we do want it tapered and I want to use that bulk 
um, the extra bolt material that, that that gives to me. And from here, we're gonna just work backwards and forwards to get a nice, smooth uh, taper started here anyway. So now as I've got a little bit of taper uh, going here, um, I am gonna tie in my next material because uh, it'll go over this tapered material. So we've got to get it tied in now. And we're going to use some hand-stripped uh, quills, peacock quill here. And we're going to be just kind of using, we're using the golden, the golden olive color. So usually when I'm tying in the, the quill, I, I'm going to want the dark edge of that quill kind of facing down. Um, and I'm going to secure this, and I've got it going off the lens side of the hook just so it doesn't interfere too much with those tails that we put in place. Um, but as I tie this in, um, especially as I get near the back where I'm going to start, I really don't want to crank down really hard on this thread um, because it'll cut right through that quill um, and it'll break it. And I do want to leave a tiny little space there between where I'm going to start that um, quill body and where I've put my tails in. So now we're just gonna work our way back up. Um, again, I'm gonna keep that uh, butt end of the quill in place because um, it it just helps, helps, helps us with that taper. Um, it gives us that additional bulk, at least a little bit of additional bulk um, that, that will be helpful. So I'm gonna just take it a, you know, a little bit further up there, just like that. And I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to cut off that butt end. So from here, I'm going to grab my bodkin and I am going to, again, work on uh, creating more of a tapered body. I want more of that yellow showing through. Um, I don't want this to be a thick taper. Um, I do want it tapered, but I don't want it thick. So um, I am just going to do some work here now, winding my thread counterclockwise and then using my bodkin to kind of flatten that out a little bit. Okay, so hopefully you can see here that we've um, put a nice smooth taper on this, um, not overly thick and pronounced. Um, I'm gonna do a couple thread wraps here just so that I can secure my uh, thread, or yeah, secure my thread because I'm gonna be using my bobbin cable. I'm getting cradle. Boy, I can't even talk this morning. Um, and then I'm going to attach my uh, peacock quill to my hackle pliers and try to be as careful as I possibly can because this stuff just breaks um, really easily. So once I have that in there, I'm going to be, like I said, very, very cautious and careful. Um, you need enough tension that it wraps, but not so much that it breaks. So you can see I'm leaving a little bit of gap in between each one of these wraps. I'm doing that on purpose. Um, having that yellow thread kind of showing through will give this a little bit more of a, an appearance of translucence. Um, I'm kind of where I want to be here. So I, what I want to do is try to lock this into place before I break my quill off. So I'm just going to take a couple of thread wraps over the top of this here just to make sure that we've got it kind of locked down in place. Then I should be able to undo my um, hackle plier at that point um, and cut off that little butt end and clean that up a little bit and even secure it a little bit more. Um, from here we're going to actually put a, a tiny, the tiniest little bit of resin on um, the body here. And so I'm going to go ahead and break out my um, UV clear um, thin from Loon uh, and just get a tiny little driplet on my sewing pen that I will use to put a really light coat um, of UV resin um, that will go on all the way around. Um, so it looked like a big drip to start with, but keep in mind I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be trying to spread that all the way around the hook here. So we have a nice 
light, um, even coating. And with that in place, I can now just hit it with my uh, torch here. That's also going to make those uh, the peacock quills um, a lot more durable. Um, and it'll also just kind of help with that translucence that we're um, going for here with the, the body. And we haven't even got to the hard part yet. Um, so here's a, uh, we're now going to turn to a mallard flank feather. And I'm going to kind of prepare it that way. I've taken the fuzzy stuff off the end so you can see we've got a really cl um, clean uh, shaft here. And I've got it oriented this way. I'm actually going to stick this in my mouth. Um, I do that a lot. Um, you can see what that's done. Um, that gives me a point. And I'm just going to use a nozzle um, that usually would, you know, come with my uh, UV resin. And I'm going to put the end of the point of that feather right into the nozzle like that. And then we'll see the front end of it coming out here. Then I'm just going to draw this feather back through. And you'll see when we get to the point where we actually had them folded back, which is right there. Um, and then we're just going to go probably about that long, like that. So hopefully you have something that looks just about like that. Um, from here, I'm going to go ahead and rotate my thread just so that I make sure it goes backwards a little bit. We're going to take a loose wrap here um, over the top. another wrap manhandle that back into place where I want it take a few more wraps here and pull it a little bit tight and with that um, with that still kind of in the nozzle um, just because it just makes it a little bit easier for me. I'm going to go ahead and trim that off with my scissors. Okay, so now that we've got that kind of trimmed, I'm just going to go ahead and take some more wraps here. Lock this down into position. And because we put that right in front of the body, um, there shouldn't be as much of a, a, a change in dimension moving from, from here to here. So I'll just go ahead and take another pass up here just to make sure that we got that right where we want it. Or at least as close as we're going to get it. Just about like so. Um, from here, um, we're going to grab the very end, uh, the top of this feather here, um, right what I'm pointing at here, and we're going to kind of separate that feather, and we're going to slowly and carefully pull that apart, kind of like so. And I'll usually leave the, these tip ends on a little bit um, because they will end up helping us out with um, moving the stuff around. Um, so not perfect, but hey, not looking too bad yet. So we've got that in place, um, which is a really cool technique, by the way. Um, not that I invented it by any means. Um, and now we are going to uh, move to our next material. I'm going to tie in a, a, just a tiny little bit of um, Z yarn that we're going to end up using for kind of a wing case on this pattern. So I've got some uh, Z yarn and dark olive here. Um, and I'm just going to take one piece here and cut it, uh, cut it off, remove it. Uh, so we end up with our little piece looking kind of like like that here. And then because that's going to fold over and be our wing case, I want that right on the top of my 
uh, body here. So I'm going to take a, a loose thread wrap here um, just to make sure we get that right on top. And then I'll take a few turns back to lock that into place. So maybe about like that. Um, from there, I'm going to go ahead and take my scissors and I'm going to cut the balance of that out, um, hopefully without um, losing the thread or the feathers that we just put in place. So just about like that. I am going to um, turn to my peacock eye here and I'm going to grab myself a, a hurl here probably grab one up near the eye because they end up being a little bit beefier or, or, but, or fluffier anyway. Just go ahead and rip that right off the, the end there. I'm going to tie this in by the tip, but I'm going to cut the tip off a little bit um, just because it is pretty weak, um, but it's fluffier towards the tip too. So you're kind of playing that balance game of um, do I want it to break or do I want it to be puffy and I want it to be puffy so secure that there with a thread wrap in front of my yarn pull it back a little tiny little bit um, just like that and then we're going to bring it I'll secure it by coming back behind the yarn again just be you know sure that we've got that locked into place there with another thread wrap and then I'm going to just take one more thread wrap in front so we're sitting um, right about here um, now we're just going to take uh, several wraps of this uh, not several um, just a handful we'll take a few behind this piece of um, Z yarn And I'll kind of transition and do a few wraps in front of the Z yarn as well. Try not to break my peacock curl. And that's probably going to do us right about there. I'm going to go ahead and lock that off with my thread. A couple of wraps there. Got that all in place. Tails are a little skewampus at this point, but um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn my vise a little bit sideways just so that I can uh, make a nice clean clip of, of getting that peacock curl stem off. Just like so. I actually have a tiny little bit of stem here as well. So at this point I've got, um, what I've done is I've created a dubbing loop here with a, just a regular dubbing um, hook. Because the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, work on tying in some, uh, some CDC that's going to be um, uh, kind of a light gray done. I've got it already um, prepared here in my material clip so it kind of looks like this. Um, I'm going to slide my material my materials in to this loop. Maybe. So here we've got our CDC feathers into our dubbing uh, loop, and we'll just kind of give that a, a bit of a spin here. So with that in place now, um, I can go ahead and we're going to take a few wraps um, of the CDC kind of over the right behind the uh, wings that we've created here create kind of that fluffy um, kind of a body and possibly pull these wings back a little bit and get one at least wrap in front as well as in back 
Um, so now we've got a nice mess going, but it looks great. So I'm just taking a few uh, turns of my thread there just to secure that dubbing loop. Um, now I can come in with my scissors and cut that dubbing loop right off. Just like so. Um, so now that we're this far, uh, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to just work on pulling these uh, wings, and that's why I kept these handles on. I'm going to work on pulling them back a little bit more because um, we're going to be bringing this material over. This is going to be our Z yarn. So we're going to want those wings angled backwards a little bit so that Z yarn can go over the top of them and become... Kind of a wing case here is, is what we're going for. So I'm just going to take a, a couple of thread turns here to secure that, hopefully behind the eye of the hook. It's at least what we're going for. So now that I've got that taken in place, I'm actually going to, um, we're going to go ahead and put a couple of um, wet finishes in here. And I'm going to do my wet finishes here on an angle a little bit, just so that I can um, stay away from those wings. So let that slide right off, pull our thread tight. Um, then we should be able to clip our thread um, off at this point. So I'm just gonna turn that upside down so I have a good look at it with my scissors here. Just like so. Go ahead and set my thread to the side. Um, I am going to leave a tiny little bit of this wing case in place and it's going to be kind of serve as kind of a little black head. So I've kept a little bit of that in place there. Um, from here we can come in and we'll trim the top edges off on these. Just like so. And then me and my OCD will circle back just really quickly because I've got a couple of pieces of CDC right up here that I don't want in that location. So I've gone ahead and kind of taken those out. A couple of fibers of yarn that I don't want in there either. The problem is, is if I muck around with this too much, um, I guarantee you that I'm just going to ruin it. <laughs> and I'm surprised I made it this far. Um, so there you have it. Um, this is a spent wing spinner um, with a really cool, um, I, I'm not praising myself. This is somebody else's technique on those on those wings. Um, a wonderful technique to use. Uh, we've got so many materials on here, uh, but what a what an awesome looking fly. Um, I really spent a lot of time. I'm sure this is going to be one of my 30 minute videos, um, but there you have it.